Hi there. Welcome. Um, for those of you who are new to WPLN, we are the Women's Public Leadership Network. We're a national 501c3 dedicated to educating, organizing, inspiring women to seek public office at all levels and be effective leaders once there. Um, we're really excited this year for Mother's Day 2023 to be profiling moms on the trail, um, women that are stepping up to run for office across the country, um, who are also balancing family life and sharing their experience, their challenges, um, and also encouraging more women, hopefully like you watching, um, to run for office. So um, we are so excited to be joined by Emily Chenevert. Uh, who's running in Louisiana for state representative. Um, so just set for her to share a little bit about her experience. Um, so Emily, thank you so much for joining us and um, would love to just hear a little bit more about your background and what inspired you to run. Awesome. Look, I'm. it's such a privilege to be able to be here today and help uh, you know, encourage other women that are stepping out, especially in a week like mother's, you know, I, I call it Mother's Day week, right? Leading up to that. So, um, but a little bit about myself. I am in Louisiana, like you mentioned, and I am from small town, Louisiana, from Leesville, Louisiana, and uh, graduated from LSU at the Manship School of Communications and Broadcast Journalism and with a minor in theater and then started my career really in media in the newsroom as like, I always say like a kind of a daytime uh, producer, associate producer for a morning show there locally, the WBRZ ABC affiliate. Um, enjoyed that and then went to work actually with an ministry, a large ministry and doing more videography and working with editors and kind of running like a weekend team that did a lot of production and would shoot stories, that kinds of thing. I love telling stories. I love sitting with people, hearing stories. And that was something that I think that brought me into, you know, obviously journalism um, and then actually went to film school in New York for a season in the producing program to learn more about the behind the scenes of filmmaking and kind of took the whole storytelling to a different level and then was back in Louisiana to do and work on movies. And I've worked on a lot of big features in Louisiana, uh, did um, a lot of independent movies and then some studio movies as well. And so as a production coordinator and line producer, production manager, where I was really like, I don't know, hiring and I don't know, uh, managing behind the scenes and making sure everybody had what they needed on a set, right? And so a lot of communication involved in that between producing team and then the crew and love that. Love, love, love working with creatives and did that for a while, working 12, 14 hour days and then got married and I had married a wonderful man, Shane, and he had two great children when we got married. And then, so I was bonus mom first, I say, and then we had two little ones two more together. So we have four total, um, Matthew, Macy, Maya, and Maddox. And so our two are older, they're out. And then, but I have a first and a third grader now, Maya and Maddox. And so got married and then really um, was still doing film, still looking at loving the storytelling element, but have always paid attention to politics. I feel like to some degree, and I feel like the last six to eight years, I started really leaning in. I don't know if it's just the fact of having children and then you start to like see what's happening in your world more because you're thinking, okay, what is their future like? And what is school like? And what is crime like? And okay, where are we headed in this journey, right? So I feel like I started paying attention a lot. And then the last few years, I realized that, you know, I couldn't really keep doing for them, staying doing 12, 14 hour days all the time. So pulled back a little bit in movies. And so now I just do some contract work with media and event and um, production, um, just kind of taking that same skill set and just transferring a little bit that's, you know, works better with family because I want to be involved with them, right? And so that's that. And then now this, right? Now running for office. So that's kind of what got my last few years, gonna, you know, focusing on like what's happening in the world. And then, um, yeah, having lots of conversations with my husband. And he was like, I think it's time you step out, you know? <laughs> Well, that's always so great to hear when um, that sort of support and encouragement is coming from within the home. Um, and that's so such a wonderful place and, and home base for your support network to be rooted in your marriage and your family. Um, what was the conversation like around maybe some of the responsibilities shifting as you are yeah. running for office and as your schedule gets more demanding? Obviously, you have some experience with a demanding schedule through your work life and professional life. Mm -hmm. um, but what was that conversation like with him? And what was maybe a conversation like with the kids as well, both the grown children as well as the school age children? It's a great question. Look, he we would we would talk about it a little bit, and I would say, look, if I'm 
you know, and t- well, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So going through Louisiana Women Lead was a big thing for me because we talked about that right in that training. And so for me, and he's actually the one, and I give a shout out to my husband for this. He's the reason I, reason I found Louisiana Women Lead because mm-hmm. he was listening to the, the director on the radio. And then he called me and said, you need to call this woman and find out who she is and get connected to them. So it's really neat to know that like he was a big reason that I actually went, so you know, got some, just to talk through some of those things. But to your answer to your question, those conversations kind of helped me think about, okay, what does this look like as a mom and as a woman stepping out? And so I kind of was looking at some of that because they would bring in some great state representatives and senators of women that had done that, right? That had walked that journey. So for him, I just said, look, there may be some days where he was used to my long hours in film, but I was, there may be some days where, hey, I'm going to need you like, you may have to kick it up a notch and pick it up at dance. Or, you know, he helps me a lot with picking up kids at school. And then I, I'm always the one bringing them. But there may be some evenings where um, I may have to go to an event or um, we go to all fundraisers together, like events right now. And we talk more about that. Like I, I try to include my kids so they see what mom is doing and they hear me share with people, the little ones, you know, and if the big ones have a schedule, their schedules are different. But it was a little bit of just like, you know, hey, we're going to have to adjust some of that. But I will say having a supportive husband at home and having that where, He's like, hey, we're doing this together, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. So I think it's about, you know, for women and stepping out, you've got to really have that support and that where you can make those adjustments to where it's doable. And I think that way the children, like my kids, I don't want them to suffer, but they also realize that mom's doing this and my husband affirms them and says, hey, she's doing this for you guys. She's doing this for our state. She wants to serve the people. So it makes them feel like that I'm doing something that is like honoring. And I think when they realize, oh, this is a great mom, we're excited for you. It helps shift their mindset a little bit too, maybe when I'm gone one night or -hmm. something's happening. So we've had those conversations with them whenever I'm there and then they're little and sometimes they may miss me one night because I'm gone and he just affirms them and says, hey, mama is, she loves you so much. And you're one of the biggest reasons that she's doing this. She wants a better country and a better state for you guys. So I think it's just including them in the conversation and letting them talk about like what that looks like, you know, um, and they get excited. Like my son, Easter Sunday, it was funny. He like wore a jacket, a blazer for the first time. And he went and got some of my business cards with my logo. was like putting it in his pocket. And I said, Hey, we're not, we're not, we're not doing that at church. He was like, well, I mean, I'm going to hand them out, mom. I mean, he's in first grade, right? It's just cute. Cause he gets excited. He gets excited too, you know? Yeah, that's great. Um, and I want to hear, you know, how, how the kids are, you know, you mentioned one example and that's adorable of him carrying around your business cards. And I know a a female candidate that I had worked for a few years back, her nine-year-old was like on it with the handing out the business cards and the tough sell um, that I feel like even in in situations where neither myself as a campaign manager or the candidate wanted to make the tough sell, the nine-year-old could cut cut right through it. Uh, But what, you know, in what ways do they enjoy um, you know, participating in the campaign, um, what are some favorite maybe stories so far or something you're excited about involving them in? No, it's great. So we are like five and a half months out because our primary is October 14th. So I feel like we just kind of started ramping up some of these. Um, I mean, I'm in the, I'm in the thick of fundraising and events, um, and, but we've had a lot of these meet and greets and living rooms and houses and going to certain things. And they've been it, they've been a lot of them. And I feel like it's, uh, they get excited of, getting all my stuff and carrying it all in with me, like my, you know, my huge logo that's framed or a sign and all my handouts and spreading them out, making them, my daughter is very, she is in third grade and she is nine going on about 19, I say, (laughs) and she is like misorganized and like type A. And if I walk out, she says, mom, that looks really great. She said, I think you should wear these shoes. Like, so she's like telling me and helping me like what she thinks I should wear and things. It's funny. Um, but helping her like she likes to involve herself and like set up a table with all of my stuff of just maybe it's a QR code of like giving to myself or maybe it's my um, push cards or maybe it's whatever it is things I have that I set up sometimes at some of these homes and so I think in letting her help in that has been really good um, and then honestly just let them be kids I think sometimes as a mom you want them to always just sit this way and shh, don't talk and like whatever and I think for me I've noticed that no they're kids and then some of these environments like in a lot of the homes that we're in they, you know, they have grandkids or maybe they have kids and like, look, we understand. And so they, I want them to feel like they can be, a, a, be a kid and then be with me on this, on this campaign trail where they um, are excited, um, but have a role and uh, it's different. They're little, right? They're seven and nine, but I, it's important for me, for them to hear when I'm sharing the why, 
And my daughter usually is, mom, I'm going to hand these out to someone to be at the table. And I'm like, okay, you can, or you can leave them right here. So there's just that we're, we're easing into that. And I'm sure I'm going to have many more stories as this goes on, but you know, they're already coming in. My son's like, is this good enough with his clothing? You know, he's like, mom, can I wear this? And so that's kind of fun because he always knows that like, it's like how dressy do I have to be? So he's learning. Like he, he, he doesn't, he, he knows, he knows, come to my bathroom and let's see how this looks. You know, it's like, it, it, it's fun. It's a fun thing for all of us, you know? That's great. Have there been any challenges or maybe difficult situations or negative feedback that anybody has had in terms of, of your balancing, you're bringing them with you or maybe not having them in certain situations? You know, um, I have a feeling that, that probably will come. I feel like I think anytime, you know, uh, and whether people mean well, they, they, they meant to criticize, it hasn't happened yet. Um, mm-hmm. I am not naive to think that it probably, it probably will, or maybe think, you know, hey, you know, where, where are your kids or why are you not, whatever. But I know in my heart while I'm doing this, and I know with great conviction while I'm doing this, and I think for me, it's been, uh, I'm like thus far, no one has said that. It, where I haven't had any of those comments. But when it comes, I feel like I'm prepared for that because I, uh, I'm i not losing focus of where I'm headed and why I'm doing this. And it has a lot to do with my children. You know, I remember when people would ask me, ask me, um, you know, what would be the one thing that would keep you from running? And I would sometimes say, oh, you know, time away from my kids and, you know, whatever. And then I was like, well, what's the one thing that pushes you to run? And I'm like, my children and their future. So it's an interesting dynamic there, right, for me. And so I just try to embrace those moments with them. Uh, when we're not doing anything related to that, although they feel like we always are talking about it, just to be real present with them at their little ball games or dance days or whatever it is that I'm doing, um, where I'm asking about them and keeping that connection so they don't feel like every single moment is about mom's campaign. But they know this summer, that's what it is. Everything is centered around that. <laughs> so, you know. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think we're all in the space, you know, Women's Public Leadership Network at Louisiana Women Lead. Like, We're all really pushing towards a future where we're not getting so many of those, um, you know, right. interrogation type questions around what, around your ability to balance both. It sounds like you're doing a fantastic job balancing both. And I hope that everyone can recognize that and that over yeah, and, time and that becomes it, the new normal. You know? Yes. And, and exactly what you're saying. I feel like there's one thing that women really do well. I think we can multitask some things well I feel like we're you know it's I'm having like it was so funny I had an event Friday night and I'm having this conversation about my you know my focus and what I care about and a lot of you know it was was kind of a men's crawfish boil like here in Louisiana we eat crawfish and then that's not everywhere right but it was a big thing well on the back of the beautiful home I hear two boys which is one of them was my son like screaming in the yard having a great time because it was all outside and I'm talking and I'm focused and I said is anyone hear anybody screaming or crying? Like, is anyone injured? And they all kind of like laughed and looked around like, no one's injured. And I just went back on point to my conversation. And I feel like that's what we have to do, right, as, as a mom. And it just is what it is. And I think you just bounce back. And it just, that really taught me in that moment of, hey, he's fine. He's over there. They know that I'm a mom. That's that realness too, when you're leading in this, in this, in this space where um, they are my, they are my like hope. They are my legacy. And so they're not a problem. They're part of this, amazing thing that I'm walking in because of them. So I feel like if, if we keep it that, keep it like in that focus for me, that's been huge where um, it's like, that is a, it, you just, you multitask, you got this, you're doing this. And while you're you know staying focused on the goal at hand with the campaign. So um, it's been good. It really has been good. Um, and cause I have such good support, you know. Well, we're so grateful to have folks like you modeling that sort of that one side where the candidate is, is balancing and multitasking and, and serving and being service oriented and, you know, and in terms of her family as well as her community. Um, and I think it's also an opportunity to call everybody that's watching into that space mentally of, you know, supporting the women that they see mm-hmm. sharing this, you know, environment with their family, um, being yeah. patient with them when necessary, being graceful, being, you know, supportive of them in those environments. Um, because sometimes we, as women can be the ones that are a little too critical as well. Um, seen that yeah. happen way too often. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. so what's one piece of advice and it doesn't have to be related just to the family topic, but maybe piece of advice, uh, wisdom thing that you wish that you had known that you want to sort of give a heads up to a woman that's also considering taking this plunge and running for office. Mm-hmm. Well, I think um, it's, this sounds very like fun, maybe cliche, but 
Uh, I, I felt really prepared because I went through that little training. I feel like with Louisiana Women Lead, where I think some of my concerns, I was able to ask those concerns in that environment with women that had gone before me. And so to say that, you know, again, I've got, I have five and a half months more and there's, I'm on this beginning of this journey right now. I feel like, um, I wondered if it was going to be, you know, I was like, Oh, I got this. I've worked 12, 14 hour days. I can do whatever. I mean, it is grueling, you know, especially if you're still working. So I would just tell people one thing for me in this, in the short journey that I'm on, I still, again, still have five and a half months. Although I felt really prepared because women were like, look, it's, it's, it's a lot like you're going to be, you know, out and you're going to be away from kids. Um, I knew that. And so I, I feel like I understand that, but um, you know, it is, it is a lot because they want to see you, people want to see you. And so you can have a great team and campaign manager or consultant, but they want to hear from you. People want to talk to you. And so I just feel like they, you're making the calls and you're doing all these things. So that's one thing I would just tell, like, tell people that if you think, oh, you know, it's not that much time, I can balance all these things, you can do it, but no, it is that much time. So just make sure that you have, you do have at least uh, these three to four hours in your day, right, to calling on people and looking at emails and following up with your consultant or your team. Um, I'm doing that now. I'm treating it like my elections in two months. Like, that's how I feel in my, in my heart. I'm just, I'm going and I'm running. So I just don't want to feel like I'm catching up. So I feel like that's probably one reason I, you know, I, I feel that now. So I would just say, you know, just uh, uh, make sure you do have that margin, enough margin to really do it in the way and run the race that you want to do it, you know, in the way you feel like you need to do it. Absolutely. I think that's great advice. And I, you know, definitely we want women to go into this process, eyes wide open. I want to make a super quick plug that if you don't have a Louisiana women lead in your state, you know, we have a network of state partners. Um, we're in 12 states right now with organizations like lead. Um, we have online trainings that don't cover every aspect of the campaign, but we do talk specifically about this kind of time and financial considerations before jumping in. Um, so you can find those all through our website, womenspublicleadership.net. Um, I have one more fun question to end on, but first I want you to plug all of your social media website, how people can connect with you and support you on your run, um, which we're acting like is two months away, but is five and a half months away. So I want to give is. people the opportunity to jump in and engage with you if they would like. Oh, you know, that's awesome. No, for sure. So uh, my website is both emilychenevere.com. And so if anyone wants to kind of go check that out and I would love to, to hear from you guys and, and see that. And then also my Facebook page, I really share a lot on that as well, um, is um, Emily Chenevere, uh, State Representative District 66. But you could just go to my website, voteemilychenevere.com, and then, you know, just click on the Facebook tab there and, uh, and, and check me out. And I'd love to, I'd love to connect with anyone, you know, in that way too. Awesome. Um, so my last question, just some light to end on is how are you spending Mother's Day this year? Well, I am spending Mother's Day with all of my family. My sister is in Birmingham, Alabama. So she is coming to um, Baton Rouge, where I where I live, and my brother and his wife and my parents. So we're kind of all going to be together on Saturday. I have a nephew graduating from high school. So it's kind of like a graduation family slash Mother's Day extravaganza. And we are Italian. So we eat Italian food. So there's one day we'll be designated to that. And then I'm sure there's some other like great meal another day. So that's, it's, it's a weekend, a weekend deal on that, on this weekend, you know, for Mother's Day. That's so great. Well, I wish you an absolutely lovely, restful, fulfilling um, Mother's Day. And we are so grateful for you taking some time to speak with us. Mm -hmm. um, again, if you are just watching this for the first time and you haven't heard of WPLN or Louisiana Women Lead, um, visit womenspublicleadership.net and we will get you hooked up with a network of women like you that are running for office at all levels across the country. And we want to be there to support you. Um, we're here behind you, Emily. We're so excited that you chose to run and step up and serve your community. Um, and we wish you all the best between now and election day. Well, thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure to do this. All right. Take care. Okay.